sinner Poor and needy Weak and wounded Sick and sore Jesus ready Stands to save you Full of pity Love and power Come ye thirsty Come and welcome God's free bounty Glorify True belief in True repentance And every grace that brings you nigh Ten thousand charms, eh? God pours his blessings out on us, one after another after another. And this weekend we celebrate the gift and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And God blesses us powerfully through the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's also it's also in addition to being Pentecost Sunday, it's our communion Sunday, and through the gifts of Jesus' body and blood, we are brought into living faith and fellowship with God, and it's so amazing. His blessings, one after another after another. We're going to look this morning in children's time at, well, actually, the Calzadas, Susan, Josh, Aaron, and Jono, are going to lead us in children's time. And a message of the Holy Spirit, the wind, the fire, the power of the Holy Spirit, and how important that is in our lives. And so kids, welcome. Each one of you, we welcome you today, and we pray that you're, you're experiencing God's rich blessing in your lives. Isn't it fun to be out on the new boat? Yeah, I love being on Lake Erie. Wouldn't it be more fun if we were moving? It would be a lot more fun if we were moving. I think we need a sail. Where's the wind? Well, 
When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what appeared to be tongues of fire that separated them and came on and came to rest in each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. So greetings this Pentecost weekend. Basically, we're preparing for Sunday service, and it's, this is Friday. It's the hottest day of the year. And so we decided, what a great day to be outside and celebrate spring and summer and heat, fire, and wind, Holy Spirit, and all of these great, great things that come together on Pentecost Sunday, as well as for our church, uh, celebration of communion. Uh, we just love Jesus Christ and we praise God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And throughout the Pentecost season, we celebrate and consider different aspects in, of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to us. And I want to highlight that this Sunday. It was kind of neat for me because I was just sitting around minding my own business at the breakfast table and my wife came in, uh, put some food on the table and then started playing on our daily bread. And the Daily Bread was about a gracious story of a woman who gave a gift to a family in front of her and the family couldn't afford uh, something that they really needed and uh, a person stepped in and <laughs> actually put her, her visa card right into the machine so that the family couldn't refuse her help and so pictures of generosity and I'm going, who can do that? Who does that? And I'm thinking about myself and I'm going, I don't do those things except for the power of the Holy Spirit working within me. And then I see that all around. And just the other day I saw Jan, rather than putting something on my table, put something on someone else's table. It was just a really, really neat experience. We have a fellow, young fellow by the name of Ian who comes with some of his friends to work in the church. It's a group of handicapped kids. And Ian has Down syndrome and Jan has a special attachment to Down syndrome because of her own brother, John. And found out just spur of the moment kind of last minute that it was ian's birthday and jen's going what can we do so she ran down and grabbed four cupcakes which have been baked by the salisbury family actually christy bauer's sister who is a super super baker and i had taken four of these just really incredible uh cupcakes down to the house and was just kind of thinking you know planning i'm gonna eat one today and half tomorrow and then half and jen goes hey how about if we use those for ian and sure enough, we threw a surprise birthday party for Ian, gave away a box of candy that someone had given to me, and Jan just spoiled Ian and made his week, and it was just such an exciting time. And then once again, I'm going, who does that? And I know that people who aren't believers do those kinds of things, but for me and for my experience, I'm like, the Holy Spirit gives us ideas, empowers us, and, and, and we say that, that the Holy Spirit, Spirit basically works in our lives to make us more like Christ and to transform us into the image of Christ. The Holy Spirit as the third person of the Trinity it persuades and empowers us. And it's a, a just an important part of our, our lives. So some scriptures. Oh, and then Robert Latsko stops by, helps me put up the banners for the week. And they're the Holy Spirit Pentecost banners. Abide in me. Come Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and the fruit of the Spirit. And there are many other aspects of the ministry of the Holy Spirit as well, but that's what are uh, the manners that are up at church right now. So I want to read from John 1, 29 to 34. And listen to 
John as he introduces Jesus, and he weaves the ministry of the Holy Spirit in, and the Holy Spirit comes upon Jesus. John 29, chapter 1, verse 29 through, 20, uh, through 34. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Look, well, preferably, behold, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, A man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. And he's speaking about the eternality of Christ, that Christ has existed from before the beginning of time. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. And it's interesting, John didn't know Jesus, but John happened to be John, Jesus' cousin. Hadn't met, here they meet, he recognizes Jesus. I myself did not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave this testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. And Jesus in his ministry baptizes with the Holy Spirit. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Jesus' baptism includes the gift of and the filling of the Holy Spirit. Awesome thing. Abide in me, come Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. Go to and uh, take a look at John chapter 3, verses 5 through 8. Well, let's pray before we look at that passage. Father, we thank you for presenting yourself to us through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we believe that it's a ministry, the, the Holy Spirit that opens our eyes to see and gives us ears to hear, that because of our sinful nature, uh, it's the preparatory work of the Holy Spirit, the provenient grace that you offer to us through the Holy Spirit that really opens a door for us to living faith in Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your many gifts, and we thank you for how the ministry of the Holy Spirit changes us and dramatically changes the church. Father, we confess our sin before you. We acknowledge that we're deeply sinful. We thank you for forgiveness in Christ. We thank you for who we are in Christ and that we are forgiven and set free in him. Thank you for this day. It's a day you've made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Okay, so John chapter 3, and here you have John, who is John the disciple, talking about John uh, the Baptist, and then this leads into a story with Jesus and Nicodemus. So Jesus is meeting with Nicodemus, and this is pretty cool because Nicodemus was a man from the Jewish ruling council, and Nicodemus had to be really careful in meeting with Jesus uh, for fear of punishment or, or persecution. And so they meet at night. They meet at night. And John's asking Jesus, or Nicodemus is asking Jesus questions, and, and Jesus replies, I tell you the truth, until someone sees the kingdom of God, they cannot be born again. How can someone know, uh, be born when they're old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. And Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water, baptism, and the Spirit, the baptism of the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. So when you hear that phrase, born again, it means we've been born once physically, but spiritually dead. And the relationship that we have with God is based on being born a second time spiritually through the work of the Holy Spirit and through faith in Jesus Christ. Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. And then Nicodemus asks, and it's really interesting, he asks, uh, how is it you know these things? And Jesus' response to him is, you're, you're a teacher in Israel and you don't know these things? You haven't heard these things before? And he points back, really, to a psalm that's called the Psalm of the New Birth, in which Jesus 
and God is, is just expressing the importance of the new birth and being born of, in, in Zion and uh, reference back to that. So the cry is, come to us, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come to us. And so we're given faith through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given to us. The Holy Spirit abides in us. Listen to David. David has uh, sinned grievously. God is calling him back to himself. And David cries out in this amazing psalm of contrition and of the heart of a, a king, who, a believer in God who realizes he's fallen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Create in me a clean heart. Don't cast your spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And David recognizes the importance of the Holy Spirit with him and working in him. And then he says this, Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God, you who are God my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will delight and declare your praise. And so with the power and persuasion of the Holy Spirit, David is brought back uh, to, to fellowship with God and a heart that's filled with joy and praise once again. Create in me a clean heart. And then we go to the fruit of the Spirit. So the banners are the fruit of the Spirit and the gift of the Spirit, the smaller banners on the outside walls of the, the church or the sanctuary. And that is from Galatians, and a lot of you know this well, Galatians and the closing uh, of the book of Galatians. So that's about two-thirds of the way into the New Testament, and I encourage you to turn to that passage, Galatians chapter 5. It's verses 22 and 23, but then I'd like to also read verses 24 through 25, one of the favorites of mine. The fruit of the Spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And by the way, speaking of banners, those banners are on the back wall of Grace Hall and the gym, and we can see them through uh, the foyer windows, and it's so neat to look down on the gym and see those banners. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And then this powerful statement, and against such things there is no law. And it's pretty neat because Paul has talked about the, the nature of the sinful nature, how corrupt and debased the sinful nature is, and because of that, we have all kinds of laws. But once the, sin, once the sinful nature is being put to death and the new nature is given, there's not a whole lot of need for laws. And I still remember from my dad's story from Frontier, Saskatchewan. He said, uh, during the time of the 30s, uh, the Great Depression, so there was a great spiritual revival in his community. And almost 90, 95% of the uh, folks in that community professed faith in Christ. And he said, we didn't lock our doors. We wouldn't lock, <laughs> wouldn't need keys for anything. We trusted just about everyone. The Spirit of God just moved in a powerful way in that community and in many communities really around the world. And people just discovered when people are following the Holy Spirit and dwell, are, are, are experience the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit, there's no need for law. And we live not by law, but by the Spirit. Here you go, Galatians 5, 22 through, 20, through 26. And once again, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Live by the Spirit. Live by the Spirit. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, to the gifts of the Spirit. And this is a really quite a 
potentially a lengthy study, but we, we'll just take a look at this quickly. Uh, what happens is the Apostle Paul recognizes the power of the Holy Spirit in giving gifts to the church, and he's addressing a church in 1 Corinthians, which is a few books or a book or two before the book of Galatians. So again, about two-thirds of the way into the New Testament, Paul writes to the Christians in Corinth, and it's a troubled church where there's a lot of, of wrangling and arguing over which which gift is most important and who's got the most important gifts and is the most valuable to the church. And Paul says, wait a minute. God has given gifts according to his desire in the body, and they're from God, <clears throat> and they're all important. And he goes to great length to highlighting how important these gifts are. So I said 1 Corinthians, there is a list of gifting there, but I'm really planning to read from Romans. Chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. So there are different lists of spiritual gifts, and the list in, in uh, Romans is, is terrific and really closes in a really neat way. So I'll get to that in just a minute. But it begins with this powerful statement about Jesus being a sacrifice, us being living sacrifices. So Jesus was a blood sacrifice, shed for the sin of the world. At that time, as he, as he dies, the, the veil in the temple is torn from top to bottom, and the way to the holies is open forever and ever. And, and the sacrificial system, in essence, is it's over. It's, it's done. And Jesus steps in. He is now our once and for all, the final sacrifice. But then he calls us, through the power of the Holy Spirit, to be living sacrifices. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to, conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Is good, pleasing, and perfect will. For the grace, by the grace given to me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy according to your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, lead diligently. If it is to show mercy, show mercy cheerfully. The gifts of the Holy Spirit, a short list of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit empowers us and persuades us to use these gifts in the ministry of the local church. And you know how important that is and what kind of gift you have and seek that gift out or those gifts out and serve the church and the community cheerfully and diligently. Listen to this. The following verse is so similar to 1 Corinthians 13, which follows a list of gifts in 1 Corinthians 12. And then 1 Corinthians 13 begins basically the same as verse 9. Love must be sincere. So practice these gifts in a spirit of love. And so fulfill the desire of Christ. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.